It's Tim with the University of Vinyl. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, if you happen to be stumbling across this video today and you're new, uh, I'd really appreciate if you would like the video and maybe consider subscribing. I have over 250 videos over the last three years. I'm coming up on my third anniversary later this week of doing YouTube videos focused on great sounding records, whether that is audiophile records or things that you can find in the dollar bin. Today I am kicking off a brand new series. It's going to be called The Crown Jewels. What are the Crown Jewels? Well, the Crown Jewels are 50 of the best sounding records in my collection. And I plan to do all 50 of these episodes during the calendar year in which we're in 2024. So something to look forward to for everyone. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, you, you know, you saw that little opening that I put together. And today's record is an amazing sounding pressing of the second Rush album, Fly By Night. This was released in February of 1975. This is a very important record in the history of Rush. Geddy Lee and Alex Lifeson decided to part ways with John Rutsey, uh, the drummer who was uh, you know, with the band since they formed in the Toronto suburbs in the late 1960s. Um, he, was, of course, was on the first Rush album, but a change was in the offing and Rush were scheduled to go on a, a, a tour supporting Uriah Heep in the United States. And, uh, you know, a month before that tour, they didn't have a drummer. So, so they hastily organized uh, auditions. And they famously had five drummers come in. The fourth drummer that afternoon was Neil Peart and Getty Lee... In this book that uh, came out this fall, fantastic by the way, My F in Life, highly recommended. Uh, Getty said he knew within about three minutes of hearing Neil Peart play along with what they were doing that, oh God, this, this is the guy, we're done. <laughs> But he had promised Alex Lifeson before these uh, auditions that he would give all the drummers, you know, a fair shake and listen to what they had to offer. Uh, the fifth drummer uh, came along and he was fairly pedestrian, fairly tame. Getty and Alex were just in awe of the power, the rhythm, the talent that Neil Peart possessed, and uh, he was called the next day after this audition and invited to join the band. This record was recorded in less than a week uh, in Toronto, and you know it. It, like I said earlier, this is a very important album. They had Neil Peart join. Neil Peart wasn't only the drummer in the band; he was suddenly the lyricist. Neil Peart wrote all the lyrics. And this is actually a very cool thing that you will find in the earlier pressings. And it's been replicated on repressings as well. But this is all the original lyrics in Neil Peart's hand with his kind of scribbling and artwork for all of these songs. The original, as you can see, is in blue and white. Uh, it's not a heavy uh, cardstock uh, insert, but this is definitely something that you want to find with the pressing that I'm going to be recommending. This is the Mercury Skyline label. And you can see that at the top, the rim text, there's nothing at the top of the label. Everything on this version is below the spindle hole. That Mercury logo. And then we have, you know, uh, information about uh, phonogram and phonodisc, uh, the marketing arm for Mercury. 
The album was produced, of course, by Terry Brown. It is a fantastic sounding recording. There's an incredible song suite on side one, uh, eight minutes and 57 seconds long, uh, even longer if you include uh, the chiming bells that end the record and are on a kind of continual loop um, yeah, as the record kind of continues to play. It's interesting because I have an auto stop on my vintage Thorin's turntable and it doesn't stop. You just hear the continual uh, bells at the end of Vitor and the Snow Dog. This was really kind of a line in the sand and something that Rush's uh, record label wasn't really a huge fan of. You know, they moved from the blues, meat and potatoes, uh, hard rock of the first album into the nether regions of prog rock. And of course they were already headed in that direction. Getty Lee says so in the book that I just referenced. Uh, he and Alex, you know, their favorite bands were Genesis. Yes, The Who. Of course, Cream. But they were really influenced and moving more in a proggy direction. And Bytor and the Snow Dog really kind of is a signpost to where they were heading. A Fly By Night was a single, and interestingly enough, Getty Lee thinks it's a little kind of a lightweight song. It's not his favorite song on the record. Um, as far as favorites go, I love almost everything on this record, uh, particularly track one, which is Anthem. It is an amazing song. Uh, with amazing, well, I'm going to talk about the sound on this. The separation on this thing is absolutely amazing. There's a huge sound stage. And my recommendation is to go and get a U.S. early pressing or first pressing. It's mastered by Gilbert Kong. You will see master disc on both sides and uh, GK, or Gilbert Kong, etched in the dead wax. And I have uh, a Santa Maria pressing that's a repress that came out approximately 1976, a year later. The Canadian first pressings also uh, feature Gilbert Kong's mastering, but the issue that sometimes you may run into with the Canadian pressings is noisy vinyl. So that is why I'm recommending you go with an early American pressing. The only other kind of interesting pressing of note that I'm going to mention today came out in 2015. It is a digital cut and it was half speed mastered at Abbey Road Studios by Sean McGee. It originally came out on a 200 gram uh, slab of vinyl. It is highly regarded out there in the collector's universe and, and amongst Rush fans. But if you go to that 100 page thread on the Rush pressings in the Steve Hoffman forum, time and time again, you're gonna read from various folks out there that they prefer the Gilbert Kong cut, and if you can get a clean U.S. pressing with Gilbert Kong in the dead wax, you're going to be really, really happy. Thanks for watching, everybody. The goal of these videos is not to go too deep, but I'm definitely going to provide you with the goods uh, on what exact pressing I have in my collection. I'm going to drop a link. Uh, from the Discogs entry into the description down below. You'll be able to check that out. Now, one other thing about this record. I have been seriously collecting vinyl records since 2017. And I have seen this in the bins in all of my comings and goings locally and around the country exactly one time and I bought it here in Fort Collins, Colorado. It's a Santa Maria pressing, and I am so happy to have this near mint example. It's a glorious listen. 
Uh, that is my recommendation. The U.S., an early master disc with Gilbert Kong and the Dead Wax for Fly By Night, the second album released by Rush. Take care, everybody. We'll see you soon.